Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a library vlog and haul. I'm not really looking for anything in particular, but I just thought it'd be interesting to go see what they have and to see if anything stands out to me. And if you watch my other video, you know that I am trying to cut back on my buying books this year and I'm kind of on a book buying ban for January except if I have a gift card because I have bought two books but those were both with a gift card so I am not counting that but I just kind of want to browse around and sometimes a bookshop is too tempting even though I like the atmosphere better there but also the drive to the bookstore is longer and the library is just right on top so no reason not to go there and I am also going to grab a coffee at the local coffee shop in town so that will also be fun I just excited to have a nice low day at the library browsing with a book so or browsing with a coffee <laughs> so yeah let's just get into the video I got my coffee and now we are just getting gas real quick and then we will go to the library but anyway I got this caramel mocha drink they call it the brick house mocha and I it's like white chocolate caramel and that's pretty much it I guess but it is very delicious it's my go-to drink but anyway now it is time to go to the library like I said earlier excited to see what they have library and I wanted to give a little haul. Here's all the books I got. I got four and I forgot how quiet the library is but it's very calm and peaceful like it'd be nice to just go there and just hang out and read and it just sounds it's just always a nice calm peaceful day whenever I go. So anyway with that said let's get into the haul. So first I got The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. This is this is an author I've had my eye on before. I actually had one of her books borrowed from Libby but I never got around to reading it and so I was just like I'll just pick it up the physical form and read it like this. heard really great things about this author so I'm excited to read this. Let me tell you what it's about. It says Nina Redmond is a literary matchmaker. Pairing a reader with the perfect book is her passion and also her job or at least it was. Until yesterday she was a librarian in the hectic city but now the job she loved is no more. Determined to make a new life for herself Nina moves to a sleepy village many miles away. There she buys a van and transforms it into a mobile bookshop that she drives from neighborhood to neighborhood changing one life after another with the power of storytelling. From helping her grumpy landlord deliver a lamb to sharing picnics with a charming trained conductor who serenades her with poetry, Nina discovers there's plenty of adventure, magic, and soul in a place that's beginning to feel like home, a place where she might just be able to write her own happy ending. That sounds really cute. It sounds really fun. I love that it's about a woman who like converts a van to a bookstore. Like that sounds amazing, like dream job honestly and it sounds cozy and cute and just like a really fun it's and i feel like it would also be perfect for winter because of the cozy vibes so i am excited to read this next we have the measure i've seen this one quite a bit lately 
and I'm excited to see what I think. It says it's part of the Read with Jenna book club, so that should be interesting. And yeah, I've been seeing this one a lot lately, so I had to pick it up when I saw it. It says, eight ordinary people, one extraordinary choice. It seems like any other day. You wake up, pour a cup of coffee, and head out. But today when you open your front door, waiting for you is a small wooden box. This box holds your fate, the exact number of years you will live. From suburban doorsteps to desert tents, every person on every continent receives the same box. In an instant, the world is thrust into a collective frenzy. Where did these boxes come from? What do they mean? Is there truth to what they promise? As society comes together and pulls apart, everyone faces the same shocking choice. Do they wish to know how long they'll live? And if so, what will they do with the knowledge? The measure charts the dawn of this new world through an unforgettable cast of characters whose decisions and fates interweave with one another. Best friends whose dreams are forever entwined, pen pals finding refuge in the unknown, a couple who thought they didn't have to rush, a doctor who cannot save himself, and a politician whose box becomes the powder keg that ultimately changes everything. Enchanting and deeply uplifting, The Measure is a sweeping, ambitious, invigorating story about family, friendship, hope, and destiny that encourages us to live life to the fullest. That sounds really good. It sounds like a very interesting concept, and I haven't really read anything like this, but lately I've just been liking books that explore themes like just friendship and stuff like that, and this seems like it will fit the bill for that, so I'm excited to see what I think. Next I have Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. The cover on this one is so cute and I've seen this one around a little bit on Bookstore but not too often. I feel like I've seen that this was more of like a quirky read but anyway it says in a sleepy seaside town in Maine recently widowed Evelie Evie Drake rarely leaves her large painfully empty house nearly a year after her husband's death in a car crash. Everyone in town even her best friend Annie thinks grief keeps her locked inside and Evie doesn't correct them. Meanwhile, in New York City, Dean Tenney, former Major League pitcher and Andy's childhood best friend, is wrestling with what miserable athletes living out their worst nightmares call the yips. He can't throw straight anymore, and even worse, he can't figure out why. As the media storm heats up, an invitation from Andy to stay in Maine seems like the perfect chance to hit the reset button on Dean's feature. When he moves into an apartment at the back of Evie's house, the two make a deal. Dean won't ask about Evie's late husband, and Evie won't ask about Dean's baseball career. Rules, though, have a funny way of being broken, and what starts as an unexpected friendship soon turns into something more. To move forward, Evie and Dean will have to reckon with their pests, the friendship they've damaged, the secrets they've kept, but in life, as in baseball, there's always a chance, up until the last out. Your joyful, hilarious, and hopeful debut, Evie Drake starts over, will have you cheering for the two most unlikely comebacks of the year and will leave you wanting more from Linda Holmes. That sounds interesting because there is another Linda Holmes book there and I thought that one looked pretty good too so if I like this maybe I will go back and pick that one up but yeah this just sounds fun and it seems like it explores some themes like grief and stuff like that and I also like that there's an athlete aspect to it I think that will be interesting. Next I have The Work Wife by Alison B. Hart and this is this cover is really pretty but this is one that I picked up at the last minute when I was about to leave and I just thought it sounded really interesting and it also has a blurb from Emma Straub which she wrote this time tomorrow which I loved it says a bold and wholly satisfying novel about power ambition and the price women must often pay for their dreams Zan Klein never planned to be a personal assistant to Hollywood royalty Ted and Holly Stabler but a decade in at 38, that's exactly how she spends her days, earning six figures to make sure the movie mogul and his family have everything they could ever dream of and more. However, today is no ordinary day at the Stabler Estate. Tonight, everyone who's anyone will be there for the Hollywood event of the season. And if the party's a success, that chief of staff job Zahn's been chasing may soon be hers, which means she can buy a house, go give her girlfriend the life she deserves, pay off her student loans. Nothing's going to get in Zahn's way. Not disgruntled staff, not a nosy reporter, not even a runaway hostess. But when Ted's former business partner, Phoebe Lee, unexpectedly shows up right before the go time, Zahn suddenly has a catastrophe unfolding before her, one with explosive consequences. As the truth comes out and Zahn realizes how deeply entangled she's become in the stabler's world, she must decide if the sacrifices she's made for the job are worth the moral price she has to pay. <clears throat> Told over the course of a single day and from three fierce perspectives, the work wife 
is a richly observed novel about female ambition, complicity, privilege, and what happens when the brightest of stars aren't allowed to shine. So that just sounds interesting. Lots of female power, which I love. So I'm excited to read all of these and I had some great finds. Like sometimes I am unsure about the library because it's smaller, but I can usually find some really great reads. Like I saw some Kristen Hanna books, some Frederick Bachman books, Ellen Hildebrand books, and just a couple others. So this is your sign to go check out your local library because they have some great reads there and it's for free. So highly recommend. And with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and if you want to see more from me, subscribe and I will see you with another video soon.